737 on a Wednesday morning now, the 2016 presidential campaign probably going to go down as one of the wildest and most surprising in history, ending with Donald Trump's surprising upset of Hillary Clinton. It was a race she was sure she'd win. She says so in her new book called What Happened? And Secretary Clinton is with us now. This is her first live interview since Election Day. Secretary Clinton, good morning. Nice good to have morning. you here. Thanks for getting up early with us. We appreciate it. I'm glad to. I, I remember I gave birth nine months ago, and afterwards they, they come to you and they say, how's your pain? Scale to 10, one to 10. How's your pain? So I, I thought... Let's start there. How's your pain? How are you doing? Well, it's gone down the scale. I mean, it was probably 25 uh, <laughs> when uh, the election ended uh, in uh, such a surprising and, and for me, uh, distressing way. Uh, but part of what has happened over the last months for me uh, was writing a book that gave me a chance to look at everything that happened, you know, what I did, what I could have done better, what my campaign could have done better, but also these forces at work uh, during the election and still at work uh, when you think about Russia and other places that are uh, of concern to me. So it was cathartic and I feel, you know, here I am and I hope that people will find it uh, useful uh, and informative. Cathartic is an interesting word because mm -hmm. people are using words to describe this book that they don't normally use in association with you, unrestrained, very <laughs> candid. People say you've taken your political straight jacket off mm -hmm. and been unleashed a little bit to say what you really wanted to say. Did you view it as a historic document or did you view it as kind of a literary version of a cleanse for you? Matt, both. I really saw it as both personal and historical. It started out for me, trying to just come to grips with what happened and to be as candid as I could with myself, that's where it had to start, but then also to look at it in a historic frame and say, you know, what was at work here? Uh, in addition to the mistakes that I made, which I recount in the book, what about endemic sexism and misogyny, not just in politics, but in our society? What about the unprecedented action of the FBI director? What about the interference by an adversary nation to determine or tilt the outcome of our election? What about voter suppression? You know, things that I think are just as important today as they were a year ago. And if we put all those factors that you just mm -hmm. laid out in a pie chart. Right. What's the biggest chunk? What's the, what's the biggest cause of your loss? What part is right. Comey? What part's Russia? What part's you? Well, I think the determining factor was the intervention by Comey on October 28th. I mean, as I write in the book, and I could have put much more into the book, and, you know, independent observers like Nate Silver and others say, yes, but for that intervention, I would have won. But it stopped my momentum. It drove voters from me who, understandably, this is not about the voters who were saying, well, wait, what does this mean, and how do I evaluate it? And so I think that, in terms of my personal defeat, was the most important factor. Can I just ask you, if yes. we, that was 11 days before the election. Yes, it if was we had that. been privy to be yes. at your kitchen table, right. when right. you heard the announcement that James Comey was saying, we're back looking at these right. emails, what right. words came out of your mouth? Be specific. Well, specifically, I write about it in the book because I learned about it on the campaign plane. Uh, and I was stunned, to be honest. I, I didn't know what to think about it because I knew there was nothing there. And we had trouble finding out what was really going on. Uh, and so I was just dumbfounded. I thought, what is he doing? The investigation was closed. I know there's no new information. I've certainly given everything of any relevance uh, to them. And then it became clear this was not necessary. He could have called me up. He could have called others involved up and said, hey, can we look at this new stuff just to make sure it's stuff we've seen to get before? Absolutely, have at it. But no, he had to write letters to Congress, of which immediately were leaked. So I feel very strongly that he uh, went way beyond his uh, uh, role uh, in doing what he did. You, you, I mean, you listen, some people say that he kind of indicted you in the court of public opinion, mm -hmm. and you certainly repay the favor in some sense in this book. You're pretty tough on Comey, and people can read about it and, and draw their own conclusions. Right. But I think Matt and I both in reading the book thought, well, what was his motive then? If he, if he was he out to get you? I, Did he you want what? Trump to be elected? What's the motive there? I searched really hard for 
that kind of understanding. And I didn't find it. And what really was shocking to me is that when it finally became clear that there was an ongoing investigation into the Trump campaign and associates for potential connections with Russia, we didn't know about that before the election. And even after the election, when he was asked, well, why didn't you tell the American people about that? That would have been an important issue. You, he said, oh, it was too close to the election. Now, try to square that. You, I don't understand you it. You point out that double standard on yes, a number of occasions right. in the book. You say Director Comey shivved you. Another area where you, you seem to come close to drawing a conclusion, but you stop just at the line is Russia. Right. You say there's right. so many coincidences, so right. many connections between people in the Trump campaign and Russia, but you stop short of saying this, and I'm asking you if you will. Do you think that the Trump campaign, with the knowledge of the now president, colluded with Russia and stole this election? Matt, I can't say that. That's what this investigation uh, is to determine. What I try to do in the book is to put forth all the information that I think should trouble Americans, whether you're Republicans or Democrats or anything else. My book, my manuscript was turned in at the end of June, early July. Lots has happened since then. Has it led you more in the direction it, of collusion? It, it, has, it has suggested to me that there was certainly, we know, a plan from Putin and the, level, and the highest levels of the Kremlin to influence our election. We now know that it was everything from Facebook ads and phony people acting like Americans who were Russians. We know so much more than we did even when I turned the manuscript in. And we know that there was communication, that certainly has come out, and we know that there was a lot of uh, interesting coincidences, if you will, uh, between what people associated with Trump were saying at the time and what later came to pass. I mean, you had Trump associates saying in August, oh, John Podesta is going to end up in the, you know, the barrel. Well, how would he have known that? The Russians hacked those emails. They stole them. Now, let, let me just quickly say, though, that getting to the bottom of this, which I hope everybody agrees we must, if I had been elected and this had come to light, if I had known once I walked into that Oval Office what we now know, I would have stopped at nothing to make sure this never happened again to anybody. Can we talk about another issue you raise in the book? You talk about sexism. I do. You talk about misogyny. And I don't have to tell you as a female in public life, that's something that a lot of female political candidates try not to talk about when they're running for office. And yet here you are and you lay it out. You know, I was thinking this country did elect an African-American president twice. Do you think it's harder for Americans to elect a woman than it is an African-American man? I think there's a lot of evidence, a lot of research supporting uh, the uh, idea that race is a much more motivating factor for voters than gender is. And, you know, I write in the book about an incredible conversation I had with Sheryl Sandberg, who has done so much work to really untangle what it is, what, you know, what's like realistic in terms of, okay, here's how, what you have to do to be successful and what is tinged, if not affected by sexism. And she says, look, the research is absolutely clear. The more professionally successful a man becomes, the more likable he is. The more professionally successful a woman becomes, the less likable she is. And the more a woman is in service for someone else. You know, when I was Secretary of State, I came out of that job with, I think, a 69% approval rating because I was in service to my country. I was in service to our president. I was proud to do it. But when a woman walks into the arena and says, I'm going for this myself, it really does have a dramatic effect on how people perceive. This word likable is such a simple word, and yes, yet it's very it's complex. <laughs> I remember 2008 during one of the debates with mm -hmm. Barack Obama where he made that famous comment, Hillary, right. you're likable enough. Mm -hmm. You write in the book about trying to come to terms with this idea that there are a lot of people in this country who simply don't like you, not for political reasons, but it seems more personal reasons. Mm -hmm. At this stage in your life, does even having to ask yourself the question of why hurt? No, it doesn't, Matt, because, see, I think they're tangled. You know, when I'm serving in an office, as I said, like Secretary of State, I have really high favorability ratings. But as I write in the book, you know, I have been um, 
and and I admit this, you know, in the eye of the storm for a very long time in American public life. And so I have a lot of stuff that's been thrown at me year after year. And I have tried to overcome it, stay focused on the job, do the best I could to help people, which is really why I'm motivated in this. And I write about how, like, take the Benghazi tragedy. You know, I have one of the top Republicans, Kevin McCarthy, admitting, like, we're going to take that tragedy. Because, you know, we've lost people, unfortunately, going back to the Reagan administration, if you talk about recent times in diplomatic attacks. But boy, it was turned into a political football. And it was aimed at undermining my credibility, my record, my accomplishments. And, you know, I get why people will say, well, hey, you know, there's all this noise around her all the time. And some of it is of my own doing. I mean, I'm, I'm a person. I know that. But a lot of it is, for whatever reason, the idea among some that, um, you know, I really do take seriously the threat posed from the right to this country, to our economic equality, to our civil rights. I take it really seriously. It's not, it's not just a political issue for me, and they are constantly trying to undermine me. We're going to get cut off by a computer commercial <laughs> here in a second. Can I invite you to stick around for sure. a few more minutes in our next half Absolutely. hour? Absolutely. We'll sure. continue our discussion with Secretary Hillary Clinton right after these messages. <laughs>